All right. Well, weak pop, far was, away from it was, the mic. It was a weak pop, but it was it was on the back of it instead mm. of in the front of it. Mm. Got to get all on it. Got Tried that to weak pop. Didn't have it at an angle. <laughs> Speaking of a weak pop, Cam Newton's shoulder, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, what we want that transition. Yeah, we wanted to kick it off with just a, a little touch of kind of current-ish events to uh, start things off. We're going to touch on two quarterbacks here. Uh, one, a newly found kind of starter who was an old starter and then wasn't a starter, almost retired, and now is a starter. So we're going to Nick Foles second, and we'll start with Cam Newton first here. Um, basically, the big news of the week was that David Tepper came out, and this is the new owner of the Carolina Panthers, and said in so many words that, you know, if we need Cam Newton to sit out for a year, he might need to sit out for a year to get right, basically, which not really sure why you needed to say that. Um, and he did follow it up with saying, you know, if, if if we could sit him out for a year and he would be, you know, good to go and right, you know, it's pretty much a no brainer is kind of sure how all that transpired. But it, it was the key it word. was it was unnecessary to even do that. So a couple of questions arose in my mind. Was it one just this is a newer guy on the block and you're in there talking to people and, you know, sometimes you say you a probably divulge much? a little bit more information like. Currently, if the Colts, if Andrew Luck had a little bit of a shoulder problem through at the end of the season, not saying that he did, I've heard nothing. I'm just saying, using it as an example, like you wouldn't hear shit about it until they absolutely had to say something about Andrew Luck's shoulder being a problem. Right. There's no like there wasn't any reason for them to for him to say that Cam could sit out all of 2019 to get right here. Let that play out. And then at some point when it's looking like, hey, we might need to let that whole thing play out you do so my big question is is one if you're a cam owner fantasy wise how concerned are you and two i guess the second part of what i'm thinking david tepper's kind of doing is kind of putting it out there like hey we can kind of take a quarterback over here and maybe if, if cam has to sit out this gives us a reason to take him and maybe and through 2019 he plays pretty decent and we could be like well we played pretty good with this new guy. We don't want to rock the boat, and we're going to ship Cam out of here. And there's been some rumblings if Cam Newton you know, is the guy, should he be the guy, which that kind of drives my thought process behind that whole thing of saying, did you say this just to plant some seeds of saying that, hey, maybe we might be taking a quarterback or picking up a quarterback and trying to uh, see what we could have in that and not have such a up and down? Because when Cam's on, Casey's, championship cam casey's coming out with a little conspiracy theory there just a little bit but uh, i don't mind why, why else would you i mean maybe it was the first one of saying you know you're new and you got caught up in the room and what was going on and you know you wanted to say something to get everybody's attention sh- sure but, but i think there's no doubt about it that you saw it in the in the play the physical play on the field from cam newton as far as a passer, especially those last couple weeks. Was of the having season. a great season by all accounts in the first half. Six and two, and then lost everything else. I mean, that was the epic collapse for the Panthers. And you could, so if they get the luck treatment, if Panther, if it like, I get what he's saying. And you said this when you got started. Like, if, if the new owner of the Panthers comes out and says, hey, you give me, I'll take if if I could get a year off of Cam, but he comes back and does what Luck did this year, basically as part, not necessarily complete stats because Cam's only had Cam's never thrown as many touchdowns as Luck did this year, but you know, performance wise, I'm my shoulder's good. After the first couple games where Luck got benched for the heave at the end of the, mm-hmm. you know, throwing it in the uh, the Hail Mary, right? That was crazy. The first couple of weeks, everybody made a big deal about that. We were like, "That's not a big deal." No, Cam Newton got taken out for his own heave at the end of the game there, and then next week or two, he's benched. So I get what he's saying. I, I if, as far as the fantasy stuff, one quarterback league, you probably, I mean, I guess you're worried enough to ha- you got because you probably got to find a replacement. Superflex league. This could be. This is crushing, right? Crushing in a in a super flex or a two quarterback league because there's not as much replace, half, more, less than half replaceability. Unless you got Nick Foles sitting on your bench with Cam. This Newton. is true, but you know this in the super flex and the two quarterback leagues, it's more than double the demand for the quarterbacks because some people want to have three and four of them. Like it's not even you know in a, in a one quarterback league you got that one guy that wants to have two or three quarterbacks but at the most part maybe a couple have two yeah the, yeah but there's you can get a quarterback in a one quarterback league and under 
any circumstances, you can figure it out. There are those rogue home leagues we've heard about where nobody will trade a quarterback, which is just weird. But in a real competitive line and real competitive league where real money's on the line, quarterbacks move around. Superflex and in, in two quarterback leagues, not the case. Tough. It's hard out there. Yeah, I mean, if you're a Cam owner, you definitely have to be, you know, sweating bullets here. You got to be a little nervous, a little tight in your in your booty hole. Uh, looking at the contract, so Cam signed a. a a five-year, hundred and three million dollar deal uh, that was back in. And it's like doesn't even really tell me. I guess 2015. Um, they have a it says they have a potential out in 19. Mm-hmm. It'd be eight and a half dead, eight and a half million dead cap. I, so that's like something to to maybe keep in the back of your mind. Even more building the conspiracy theory here. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it begs. It's like why would that owner come out and say that? He doesn't need Except to say for that, that he just January. didn't know any better and just got caught up. But but he's got to have someone that's like right. vetting what you, he's about to say to people. You right? would really like to think that. Not so, if he's the boss, man. Right. Which, Jerry Jones ain't nobody vetting him, buddy. He, he came in there and he did what was the kind of big dingling swing and, and bought up the Panthers because he had a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, good so for him. Maybe, maybe he doesn't, but I just I can't understand why you would say that without having some sort of conspiracy theory behind there of maybe, hey, we're trying to plant a seed of being like, don't be too alarmed if we do do something like this. Like, no, it's not the end of Cam. We're just, you know, bracing ourselves for what could be a Camless 2019. Well, I thought that that would that meant that they were trying to get people to trade up either past them for quarterback or trade to get their pick for a so quarterback you went a in the bit, upcoming draft. Opposite direction a little bit that they didn't well, really want a quarterback. And that they were trying to put out the vibes that they wanted. You know, I thought this was one. the earliest. Yes, the earliest. Um, hey, this is what we're, we're thinking about going quarterback. So you guys need to yeah. look at our pick if you if you want to get one of these Dwayne Haskins or whatever. You're going to be looking to get over the Panthers because we're ready to take a quarterback. Which in turn you would think just in most cases when teams do that, either they're looking for a nice trade back or just for somebody to jump in front of them, take a quarterback and push one more good position right. player down to them that's not and one more good non-quarterback down one more spot in the draft sure so but i like your conspiracy a lot better it's, <laughs> it's so much more fun than what i'm way juicier about. yeah so then as far as the fantasy implications obviously you're crushing the two quarterback and the one quarterback league because when cam is good i do think he's can carry you to a fantasy championship if he st- if you were in a startup last year though he was at a discount because he's coming yeah. off a down year like early cam was so expensive that you probably would be more devastated in, in that capacity, whereas like this past year, you you had to spend a little bit to yeah. get him more than maybe you might be a little comfortable spending for a quarterback. But the upside was just so much so, so there. Sure, but like I couldn't be mad at the Panthers if they did want to move on from him. I mean, he's so it's like a double edged sword because quarterbacks so hard to to nail and and you need it and and they have to be good for you to win. But like Cam. I don't know that he can win him a Super Bowl. Like he got to the Super Bowl and they were it, it, they were within eight points and he fumbled and he didn't even try to recover the fumble. Like he, I don't know how much this cat can 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 take you to the promised land. Like he's got to be on the high high and he's got to be loving himself and everything has to be going great because the minute some adversity comes in there, sure you get he's pouty like, cam and then and then you're done and right. then he's done. You get pouty cam and it's not great, but that's what I'm saying. When he's when he's good, he's good. I, I, I look at it as, you know, people are quick to say, oh, you, you ready to get rid of Cam? And it's like, hell no, I'm not ready to get rid of Cam. Like, who else are you going to get? Like, yeah. I know that there's some quarterbacks coming up. Um, and we, we st- there was a big quarterback draft this previous year with Baker and Sam. And we still don't know if half of those guys or really any of those guys are going to be really good. We think Baker and Sam Darnold are going to be good. Jury's still out on most of those other guys. But we all those guys could flop this next year, and all of them could be it's so hard to find a quarterback, at least with Cam. There's a built-in somewhat of a floor that he can run around for a little bit. He's a bigger guy. He can make plays. Cam and if you have a decent defense around him, and I like where their offense was heading, like I, I don't hate it. I don't love Cam's attitude sometimes, and I don't like pouty Cam. Well, nobody I don't, I don't likes mind pouty someone's, Cam. I don't mind the attitude necessarily, but when it affects your play right. greatly. Well, it's great. It's a, When it's the attitude's working with you, it's great, and when it's working against you, it's miserable. Well, through through eight weeks with the bye week, they're six and two, um, and nobody's talking about we need another quarterback. Right. 
And even in, in as far as fantasy goes, no pa- pouty cams nowhere inside. As far as, fan- as fantasy goes, let's say all year long because he had week fourteen and fifteen were down weeks. He couldn't throw the ball, didn't do anything, and his shoulder was hurt and didn't even want to run. But those legs, and for your fantasy season, my man's averaging twenty two point eight ga- points a game with those two duds at the end of the year before when his arm basically stopped working. So you can easily ki- he was probably averaging he was probably the quarterback three or four. Mm-hmm. Every for a while. on you know every week and he was on one for sure he was he he was on a heater that's what so yeah exactly like 18 31 31 20 26 27 30 23 17 28 and even when he, he his shoulder was hurting two weeks before they just he was just running around like right so they so, probably should have they probably taken a little bit of this self-inflicted because they probably should have pulled him uh, yes. sooner well, they were into tailspin, and they were like, for a while, they they still could have made the playoffs, right? Because they started six so and good. two, yeah. So since they were six and two for you know they lose a couple games, and you're still in the playoff hunt. So they were trying to sneak in, and they just couldn't get it going, and it went downhill and got eliminated in sack cam. But as far as the team goes, like you said, like, and I'll give this to Panthers credit as a team. I've never heard one person say they want any. And Greg Olson's for he's always in front of the mic. Mm-hmm. They love Cam, mm-hmm. and and there might be some guys in there on that team that's like, I think we could go to the promised land, like Jay says, without Cam. Maybe we won't ever cross that hurdle. But on a week to week basis, my man can move the chains with his legs when he needs to. His arms good. I mean, he, he, like he he's not Andrew Luck with his arm, but what he does with his arm. Because of what he does with his legs, he doesn't have yeah. to, you know, he doesn't have to diagnose plays like a traditional pocket quarterback who can't run because he is Cam Newton. He's bigger than the linebackers. So everything that he does moving forward with his body brings the defense up. And when he had that year, we had Ted Ginn, the Super Bowl year, like it was, he, there, he could do no wrong. Mm-hmm. So if you could find a, a happy medium between that guy and, you know, just stay away from Patty Cam good, would be all right. But good. he can move the chains. And, and when he gets you in the red zone, he's as good as a touchdown. Yeah. So he, he can win ball games. It's not about winning the ball games in the regular season. It's just the adversity of the playoffs. Good skill positions around him right now. I think on the up, you'll lose Funches, but I mean, I don't think that's a huge loss for you. You probably fill him in with some other middle of the road player or maybe nobody at all. And you just keep the group that you have mm. and roll forward. I like all of those guys moving forward. Uh, you need an offensive line. They had some injuries on there for the first some time their, in a while. They didn't have right. a good offensive line. They had, had some a injuries offensive line for a while, but you need to protect, you know, luck got was, was banged up because of taking so many hits and having, you know, the terrible offensive line, you know, I, I don't know if there's a little bit of correlation there, but cam takes extra hits, extra uh, hits. maybe not getting sacked as much, but, um, definitely takes hit on all those runs. You Absolutely, got to be taking hits. Um, if he does have to sit, the light at the end of the tunnel is at least you just saw Andrew Luck sit for a year, and you know, by all accounts, it looked like Andrew Luck by the end of the season was back and and as good or better than he's ever been. Um, so I think you know it is a little bit. If it's a two quarterback league, it's a little devastating. If it's a one quarterback league, you could probably get around it. But when he's good, he's championship level taking your team to the promised land fantasy wise yeah um so I, but i do think there is at least a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel even if he's not on the for whatever reason the panthers when he comes back and healthy um you know i don't think you can go too wrong with can in your quarterback in fantasy so bummer that the shoulder's injured but light at the end of the tunnel if he does sit out and gets right oh topic number two let's do it the current ish events Let's uh we, we plugged a little Nick Foles. We'll start just right there. You believe in in Nick Foles right now. Gonna get a contract somewhere else, most likely. Um we'll get into the speculation and a couple of other little things of connected some dots uh, at the end of the Foles talk. You guys in or out on Foles? If you have Foles in a two quarterback league, are you 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 buying, selling? I mean, I think you should be selling in the bubble right now for super super flex and two quarterback leagues. Let's Foles is year in fantasy points totals, and I know he hadn't played a ton of games in his career. Ninety nine fantasy points, two hundred and seventy three fantasy points. That was with Chip Kelly. Everybody knows twenty seven touchdowns, two picks. Played his way, one hundred and thirty four points the next year. Played his way into a huge contract with St. Louis. That got him thinking about retirement. It was so bad. 98, 
backed up Alex Smith in Kansas City, 28. And again, this, he's not playing, but it's, the average is still... He doesn't score fantasy points. He doesn't play. When he does play, it's it's he's a, he's a winner. And he's not necessarily a prolific fantasy quarterback. He's not out there running around. He's not running in the mm-hmm. end zone. He does have some touchdowns here and there, but how who was calling for Nick Foles in the first three weeks of the season? Mm-hmm. Where was he? Yeah. Hey, I know. Wentz back on the field. I know you weren't excited about your fantasy production out of out of Nick Foles the first three games of the season. Yeah. It, I t- well, it was six points week one against the Falcons' terrible defense. 19 points week two on the road. At, and that's all he could muster was 19.6 points against Tampa Bay, the 32nd defense in the league. And then week three. They were hot coming off of beating uh, <laughs> the New Saints. Orleans. Yeah, right. And then he gets 10 points. Um, and uh, Wentz comes back and he sits out and he comes back and goes 10 by, points. By week four, they, Philadelphia was having a conniption and they needed to have Wentz back in there. Right. All right. But let's, again, this the, the Nick Foles loves comes from wins. Like he did have 35 points against Houston in week 16. Week 17, they had to win the game to make the playoffs at Washington. 16 points. 16 points in a winner against Chicago on the road. 16 points against Chicago on the road. That's probably like 40 points adjusted because <laughs> he played against Chicago. But I'm like, and then 16 points against New Orleans last week. Like there are, there's not fantasy points, and you take them away from the whisperer, which is you know Peterson and and his happy place, which is Philadelphia. I I think you I think this is a huge sell window for sub, super flex and two quarterback leagues. You basically just got gifted somebody sure. who went on your bench. You had him on you had him coming into the year, or he may have changed hands because of when Wentz came back or whatever. Right. But I know we had him on our on our bench, and we were trying to plug him in. First got gifted couple. him last year. Basically, we had him sitting around. You got he, gifted he came him again, in and we kind of didn't really do much with him. Right, and now we're getting regifted. And I, we got gifted again, and I just I think you should be moving him here. That's what I would do. Is there a market for Nick Foles out there? Are there like Nick Foles truthers? Well, I, I think I, well, I it think, only takes one. Yeah, it, well, one. Yeah, it only takes one, and, and two. Like he's going to be a starter. So anybody in a super flex who's going to be a starter and has been at least viable and has a little bit of buzz. I mean, I, I don't think there there isn't a market for you. In yeah. A, you know, if somebody's going to pay him to be their quote unquote franchise quarterback. Well, here. he's worth way more than a wide receiver three or wide receiver two in a two quarterback league. Yeah. Just because he's a starting he's, quarterback. Right. Exactly. And Anybody that's taking snaps on Sunday is worth. And he's going to get at least probably two years a run of whether he's good, bad or, you know, to, I, I will say Foles said he's grown up a lot and he's 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 more comfortable with the quarterback he is because let's go back to that good season. That was Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly's really first full year into the league getting going, and nobody knew what to do with Chip Kelly's offense. Like defensive coordinator, Chip Kelly tore the league up. He went, he took a four and twelve team to the playoffs two years in a row, and then he, you know, he there right. was Sim- his his downfall was bringing in Sam Bradford, but he should have kept the more athletic Nick Foles. Now that we can look back on it with good clear hindsight, basketball but, player, right, right, exactly, blow post and he can drain threes, <laughs> but it's just. I think I think you gotta if he's in two quarterback league he's worth a ton just because he's gonna be a starter. But before I see him not really live up to the there's this Nick Foles love Big Dick Nick is what they call him. Yeah, and you know like you got to Nick all these things you gotta roll you gotta roll <laughs> like that Nick over Foley and dynamite but yeah, whatever right. you gotta roll that over now before you get lost in the. So we have them in uh in the UDPL, right? Yeah, but we don't have enough we don't have enough interest in the league to really like Casey said, we didn't trade him when we had a chance because we didn't send out enough offers to get it done. Well, now we'll have plenty of time. Right. He's going to be this he's going to get a, he's going to be a franchise guy. Like he just went from be he went from being the backup to being the starter back to the backup. Right. You got till week 1 to get so, this done. So now we got plenty of time. He's going to like like I'm saying he's getting 2 years of like you know anonymity here of saying like all right we're he's going to be locked somebody's going to pay him a ton of money for it and he's going to be their starter for a year or two so i agree so we got him we also have kirk cousins which is kind of a bummer and uh, bordelais and then bordelais was our second quarterback we might have the new jacksonville jaguars quarterback <laughs> with nick Foles. and i my first thought was like all right we got a second quarterback because it's a two qb league i mean it was a super flex but it's pretty much you, you we inherited the team for any new listener we inherited this team Right. And so 
I mean, if we trade Nick Foles, like we got to get a quarterback. Back. Oh, for sure. But I'm I'm looking to I'm going. Oh, this is going to be one of those things. Like we talked about Tariq Cohen, I think on a Patreon show a little while ago, and just like, oh, you sell Tariq Cohen. Well, who are you going to get? Like I'm looking to take. Like I'm, I want to take Kurt, Tariq Cohen and something and try to get like a more stable f- workhorse running back. I'm trying to take Nick Foles, add something to him and get a more stable uh, QB two for my super flex. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's just going to fetch you another, you know, you're not going to trade starter for starter here just because right. somebody likes Nick Foles better well, than they like. And that's why uh, I said Derek Carr. Well, yeah. Well, that would be the, the maybe that you could get that swap. That's why I said he's worth more than a wide receiver, a wide receiver three, or even he's worth more than a good wide receiver two, just because there is no – it's hard to move around a quarterback in a super flex in a two-quarterback league. And that's why uh, Derek Carr's name came up, because he's a very disrespected quarterback. Right. But that dude is a starting quarterback. Moving forward – you know he's going to be in the league. If he le- if Oakland lets him go, and then when they move to Vegas or whatever, let's maybe they take Kyler Murray this year just for kicks. Yeah, got a lot of picks. Maybe they take Kyler, go to Vegas. Derek Carr's out. Somebody's going to give Derek Carr a chance to be their franchise guy. Absolutely. So I agree. He, I like in a two quarterback on the down. I think Derek Carr can play. He showed at the end of the year that he played pretty well. Jordy Nelson had some juice in the tank and. He didn't. What wasn't the terrible. Raiders uh, uh, as a team played pretty well together. They, they had to beat the Steelers somehow. Ugh. Like you know, <laughs> they, don't remind me. Yeah, so they had to. They they played pretty good. Considering Not that I like the Steelers, the but. entire world wrote them off for tanking, and they traded yeah. Amari Cooper. They traded Khalil Mack, and they just the entire world had them being like, "What's going on with the?" The coach, where they just got a ten year, ten year, hundred million dollar quarter uh, right. so contract. So he did, the owner didn't have enough money to pay Khalil Mack even, so they had he to gave it all him. to the coach. Right, <laughs> right. So, real quick before we take our first uh, break here, uh, Jaguars hired DeFilippo. A lot of dot connecting of Foles going to the Jaguars. <laughs> does that does that do anything for you? Does that make you? I mean, and connecting the, that. DeFilippo was the quarterbacks coach of the Eagles um, when Foles was over there on the Super Bowl team in the run. And does that make you more comfortable with Foles potentially going to Jacksonville? How does that does that weigh in on your? I mean, maybe a little bit because like at least we have a second quarterback. You know? Yeah, I mean that's what I'm like. If he's on Foles is in every super flex and two quarterback league, Foles is already on somebody's roster. Unless for you got a funky league where you got. You know, short, short benches. Every quarterback's rostered in those types of leagues. So you just got gifted a quarterback. You got gifted mm-hmm. a starter. What are you going to do with him? Like Damian Williams. Yeah. Um, Who we're going to talk about a little later. So does, does, but does the Filippo thing move the needle for you at all and making you want to say, yeah, maybe I'll give Nick a, tri- a chance? Or well, see, the, the D Filippo thing right now, I was just reading about that on Roto World. Like, that's the part that really has you. There's a fence obviously rider there. Obviously, nothing's happened yet. They're, but. They're, well, uh, yeah, obviously, they don't have foals, but they it had they did hire him. The Jags brought in D Filippo, mm-hmm. which he got fired because he wouldn't run the ball enough in Minnesota because he wants to spread. He wants to be, let's... Well, you know, he was trying to showcase his talents of saying, hey, I'm going to run this crazy i'm gonna run this pass happy offense and look at what i like that because that's know, where the, that's the league what was kind of going yeah and and he came in and, and there he's he wants to pass it and the jags want to run it what i'm saying is is I, i'm not necessarily saying that he he did want to so pass take it Foles i, out I of think it he's trying second. to showcase the passing of what and like hey this is what everyone was looking for because he was trying to audition for a head coaching job at that yeah. point yeah Coughlin knows him. He's been with Coughlin. He knows he's not going to Coughlin's not just going to be like, hey, go out there and throw the shit out of the football like Coughlin's going to want some balance. Yeah. So I don't you know, I think that's he kind of knows more, what he's getting into a little that's bit. That's what I'm kind of just kind of my I just when I saw that and I'm putting those things together, you know, Filippo came from Doug Peterson and all this good stuff. And it's just a little bit of a, a budding of heads of offensive philosophies almost unless Filippo says, OK, I'm coming back over here to you, and because you gave me my first start in coaching back in the day, and and you know when I'm talking about the uh, general man, the the head man for the Jags, the old guy, what's yeah, his name? Coughlin. Coughlin. Him yeah, and Coughlin. Right. Him and Coughlin are boys from back in the day. Yeah. So like maybe he's like, all right, Coughlin, I'll come over here and give you some balance, but he didn't want to give Mike Zimmer balance. Right. So that, well, that, that's just a little bit, just a little confusing for me. So it doesn't. So two, it doesn't move the foals needle for you then. No, well, not necessarily. 
Okay. And there's no guarantee Foles is going no, to Jacksonville. No, but, but it's an easy dot to connect there. But he's going to go that somewhere. That being said, that who it, it's the fact that the Jags bring in Filippo, who is I'm at, at least if nothing else, he was familiar. And very and he was he was one of the he was very close to being a head coach last year. He was a hot name getting tossed yeah. around. So like the fact that they bring that's what him I was in, saying. That's why what he was so doing I was guess, Zimmer. I guess it, it's, it's not like the Eagles didn't have at least somebody. They weren't doing it with one running back, but they were right running the ball. I guess for the Jags, there's light at the end of the tunnel for the passing offense bringing in DeFilippo. Mm-hmm. I guess, because it's just it's for me, it's a little bit tough to get my head around it because the Jags were like, hey, this is how we're going to build it. We're going to be the best defense in the league, and we're going to ram it down your throat and boot action with bowl uh, with Bortles and that fire burn out. So maybe they're like, all right, let's hit a little bit of the reset button, not all the way, but let's take we'll take Filippo, and if you want to open up our passing game a little bit, maybe I could okay, maybe good, but good for the Jags because it certainly didn't work out this year. All right, well, let's take a quick break. If you're listening to this on YouTube, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit the little thumbs up button. If you're uh, on Twitter, find us at the FF Dynasty. We'll be back right after this break. All right, welcome back. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We also have a website that's also the FF Dynasty.com. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, give us a little thumbs up, and uh, hit that little bell icon down in the, uh, I think it's, is it the left hand part of the I screen? It's up on the right, top right, Just right next to the subscribe button. So that way, whenever we do post something, if you're subscribed, it gives you an automatic alert. A notification. So let's get into the uh, main event of our little show today we're going to go sony michelle followed by damian williams but this is going to be the sony michelle portion (laughs) going to kind of do uh a little value check kind of looking into the future buy sell hold combo platter on sony michelle here and see what we think um so obviously he started off the year on a terrible note with the uh arthroscopic knee surgery misses some of the preseason then misses uh Game one comes in week two, starts off a little slow, 10 carries for 34 yards and a reception. Then week three, 14 carries, 50 yards, a reception. No TDs in either one of those weeks. Gets things rolling week four at home versus the Dolphins, 24 for 112 and a touchdown. Um, Then 18 for 98 and a TD and a reception. Week five versus the Colts. Week six at home versus Kansas City. Interesting because that's the matchup this week. Uh, 24 for a buck of six and two touchdowns versus the Chiefs. Then week seven off to another hot start has a big run at Chicago and then a, a big catch in Chicago before suffering that terrible looking knee injury and which looked like a shit could have been the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, but then kind of bounces back week 12 missed uh, week eight week nine um, week 10. Uh, they had that weird game against Tennessee and then the Pats had a game, uh, bye week, week 11. Then week 12 comes back strong um, against the Jets again, 21 for 133, two touchdowns. And then kind of had an up and down season for the rest of the season. Week 16 being the next big highlight against Buffalo, uh, 18 for 116 and a touchdown. And then, of course, last week you saw what he did against the Chargers. Three scores and 100 yards before halftime. Right. Um, so... It gives Sony 209 attempts, 931 yards, averaged 4.5 a carry and six touchdowns with only seven receptions on the year. Currently ADP 37. Um, James White's not going anywhere. He's locked up until 2020. I guess my biggest question of this whole thing is outside of, we'll get to the, you know, the, the second part of the question is the uncertainty of the Pats moving forward, which is the one that's always in the forefront of this question of, you know, maybe you don't want Sony Michelle because of you don't know what the Pats are. But my question is, is this guy, um, you know, maybe just like a souped up version of Jordan Howard and everybody loved to hate on Jordan Howard because he was this plotter and thousand yards and touchdown dependent and this and that. Well, I'm sure he had more catches than seven in, uh, in yeah. his first two years in the league. Um, it was in the 20s. And then you put, you know, the reason why is because James White's, and I'm not saying that Sony can't catch the ball. He doesn't have a great resume to support that he can. Um, but I do he think he hands. can catch the ball. You saw him catch it a couple of times. Like I mentioned, the Chicago game had a nice catch. He had a catch in this Chargers game. Um, but he doesn't have that floor where you can get the three catches for 30 yards, four catches for 20 yards, where it can kind of supplant that TD uh, oh. that you may or may not get. And then, you, you know, Cohen was kind of uh, Howard's 
bane of his existence kind of taking away things. Well, White's the same for the New England Patriots. And if you put those guys, Cohen and White, side by side, took away their pictures and their names, you couldn't tell that much of a difference. You know White had a really good year, so you could probably cherry pick and say how this guy had the clearly had a little bit better year. One was RB8, other was RB12, Cohen was 12, White was RB8. Um, that's not really going to change. So are you guys like down with what's going on with Sony Michelle? Uh, kind of bringing that up. Do you agree that maybe he's a souped up version of Jordan Howard of if the touchdowns don't come and only has 90 yards, you know, it's still 9.6 in your, you know, in your fantasy lineup there. Right. And, and right now he's ADP 37. Before I hand the floor over to you last year at this time, Jordan Howard was 36 in ADP. Now he's currently 70. Mm -hmm. I like Sony Michelle. I think he's a good player. Maybe some of that burst and electricity was uh, downplayed by uh, scope, followed by another bad knee injury that was nagging him. I think the long on the year is 34. So you didn't see any of the game breaking speed that a lot of people were in love with from Georgia. Thought he was this electric kind of guy. Not saying that he isn't. Maybe he was hampered by that. But I mean, I'm, I always liked Jordan Howard, so I, I wasn't one of those people, but it just seems like there could be a limited... He has to kind of get in the end zone because there isn't a huge floor ca a catching floor for Sony Michelle. So are you guys down with Michelle and then add in you know what everyone else likes to say is nobody knows what the future of the Patriots are is with Tommy and you know how the and Belichick and how the rest of this thing is going to go. Um it's kind of unknown. Tommy's 41. He could win this year and hang it up. He could play till he's 46. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, so are you guys down with Michelle? You you not down with Michelle? Do you agree with my uh, not saying that he's he's a better athlete than Jordan Howard is? I'm not saying he's Jordan Howard. I'm just saying if you put the stats kind of next to each other, there's a lot of similarities. So anybody out or in or indifferent? How do you, How's your feelings towards Sony Michelle moving forward? I mean... And so there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to all that. Yeah. After uh, that, <laughs> I'm gonna take a swig. The eight, first off, let's start with the ADP. Thirty seven seems a bit high. Uh, there's definitely the fear of the, the no PPR floor, right? That's probably the biggest concern anyone could have. But like he's so sexy and cachet sounding that they don't people almost don't care about that. Otherwise, he wouldn't be up so high in the ADP. Right. And Jordan Howard got murdered for this, and it doesn't seem like anybody's even really drawing a comparison that way. Well, it's more so just the Patriots moving forward. Sony has the appeal of being able to house it from anywhere on the field, even though we didn't really see that this year. Like you said, Long was 34. He had another run of 33, and then that was the only 30-yard-plus runs that he that he had all, all year long. And if you don't get the touchdown, there's some very down weeks looking at the, the box scores here. I think he averaged 11 points a game because there is some big down. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some threes and some fives and sixes, and then there's there's some 22s. When it's good, it's some, great. Right. And so I do think that he was hampered by a knee injury that reoccurred throughout the year, and he, I think it was pretty impressive that he was able to come back from the scope and be productive for the team and, and be that fill that LeGarrette Blunt type role. And if he was... You know, I think you put him on that team a few years ago where LeGarrette Blount scored all those touchdowns, he shows better. And I think a healthy Sony Michelle in an offense with Tom Brady might be worth that 37 ADP, but you don't know how long Tommy's going to go. It almost feels like this weekend is going to like determine what the future here. It feels like we're, we're seeing the past versus the present or the future with with Tommy versus Mahomes and I'm curious to see how that game I, I'm so excited to watch that game and I think everybody is and so there's that cloud of the Patriots there's the reality of the PPR floor there's James White who isn't going anywhere he signed through 2020 and if I'm in a startup I'm probably looking elsewhere at the top of the fourth round than Sony Michelle Was well that, would you agree with that Bico yeah it's Putting my team together tomorrow, tonight, my fourth player or my late, my third player at the end of the third round. And and it's not about the player, Sony Michelle. Right. Right. It's, no, I love Sony. I think we all like the player. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's my it's about the situation. It's my team and, and right. I'm, I'm, when I select this player, especially a second year on a rookie contract on the from the first round, 
His situation didn't change. Talent and opportunity typically have to go hand in hand. He's staying. He's going to be on the Patriots for a couple of years. And it is the thing that the thing about the Sony Michelle and the Patriots situation is it's the Patriots and that can it can be a James White game. And we didn't. um, Old Rex was hurt for a lot of the year. We didn't see a ton of Rex, but he could they they could go three headed backfield at any at any drop of a hat. The thing I think is different a little bit from Jordan Devlin Howard. can t- vulture you for touchdowns. Devlin can get you <laughs> for a couple of touchdowns. The one thing about the Jordan Jordan Howard, if you hit him by average points per game, he's thirty two on in this list that I'm looking at here. Ranks thirty two. Ranks thirty two. Yeah, it's eleven point three points per game, like which is right around Sony's. Well, threshold. Sony Sony Michelle must be below that because he's not on my screen. We stop at thirty two, but you 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 can with the injuries. For Sony Michelle, he you can kind of erase some of that average. You you can you can almost look at Sony's game log and you can look at his year and pick out the healthy games. There right. was it there was the game at Tennessee where they just got well, that's blown what I said. out. It was that weird Tennessee that, game where he was came weird. back. That and was then, weird. Then but, the bye. But other than that, you can basically tell when Sony was healthy and when he wasn't. And that was that's the thing about it is you know. When when and I we said this I know I said this when the Patriots took Sony Michelle in the first round and everybody was giving them a hard time about it like it's why wouldn't you want to so, take why wouldn't you want to take a little pressure off of Tommy uh, with a with a highly talented back sure. but, but to go back a step like what about all the games from week twelve to to week sixteen it's basically week twelve and then week sixteen so there's a couple of games in between there where he's healthy where he's not really doing anything either where he's just not scoring the touchdowns. He's not getting any catches, and that brings in, and that can happen, and that can happen a little bit more. And it's often. not, a, it's not his problem. Like it's not because he's not any good. It's just because right. the situation that he's in, and they were doing different things. That one of those games was a James Devlin two rushing touchdowns right. for sure, and that's that that can happen, and it, that's part that's part of exactly what you were spelling out there. That happens to guys that don't catch passes. Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing wrong with him, and he got five points. He might have had fifty of the hardest rushing yards all week long, and helped his team sure. convert. Six short, short third down plays. You mm-hmm. know, it's it, you when you get a Patriots running back, you are inheriting game flow, and and basically the biggest and I, week to week scheme. That's what I was about. That the biggest week to week scheme changes. Ba- what we just saw this week. This was the most incredible thing. the The Chargers defensive coordinator was the hottest thing in the world last week before Sunday. Because he stopped Lamar Jackson with seven defensive backs. They had four down linemen and no linebackers on the field. It was all safeties and corners. And they were tackling Lamar Jackson and Gus Edwards. And they just stymied him. And all of a sudden, that was the best thing ever. And football's changing. And then the Patriots and Bill Belichick's like, hold my beer. Watch this. Y'all want to put, y'all going to come out here with seven defensive backs? Before the first, before the halftime, Sony Michelle had three touchdowns and 100 yards. Like, Blew the Chargers defense out of the water. Now, the, there's a and lot was, to be. And it was a ton of James White. There's a lot to be said. It's and a ton of James White. But there, and there's a lot to be said about the Chargers' travel schedule. And the, and 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 actually, a, a, we a big fan of the the RJ Bell podcast this year. Fez and RJ Fez made reminded us that not only did the pay, the, the Chargers just play the Ravens. They played them two weeks ago before that, too. So three out of the last four weeks, they played the Ravens in the hardest-hitting defense in the league. And now you got to come back to the East Coast for a second straight week, 1 o'clock tip, 1 o'clock you know, Patriots kickoff. Patriots coming off a bye. Patriots coming off a bye in two weeks being double-digit double digit favorites at home against the Jets and the Bills, and they won easily. So basically, the Patriots, what Fez and RJ were saying, was the Patriots the most rested team ever versus maybe the most beat-up team ever, and the, the spot was horrible for the Chargers. But Yeah, the but fact that no, they have a better record and they're on the damn road was just... Yeah, that's... That's just the way it fixed, works. Well, you know, when your division, when your division, if you're that good, don't lose to the Chiefs. Well, they beat the Chiefs actually, tore my heart out that won the road. Yeah, um, that was horrible. But the um, that that's what I'm saying. Like that the the spot was there, and Bill Belichick stomped on, like put his put their throat, put his foot on the throat, boot in the neck, like just stomped them out. The, in the fourth quarter, they scored some points, but they, this everybody that was watching that game knew it was over in the second quarter. No questions asked. And that's that's just, but it was Bill Belichick saying, "Hey, this is what we're going to do." And Sony has, you know, thirty-five fantasy points before halftime. Next week, 
We'll see. the 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 idea is that you want to say, okay, well, let's keep Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines, and plus have Sony Michelle run for another hundred yards for halftime. But what happens when the Chiefs get up? If the Chiefs are up ten to nothing, Sony's going to be watching from the sidelines. That's what I'm thinking. That then it turns into a real James White game. But if if the Patriots are behind, Sony Michelle's out of the game. That that's your risk with Sony Michelle. So it 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 a late third, early fourth startup pick. I want to put somebody that is in my lineup more confidently every week. And there's Sony Michelle could be averaging 20 something points a game next week of next year. Maybe this Patriots are like, Hey, that if he comes into the season fully healthy, this is like Casey said, the dude had his knee scoped in training camp. I mean, in, in the preseason, like second week of the preseason, all of a sudden he's, they got, you know, medical instruments inside of his knee a week before he needs to be playing. All right, so are you buying him at 37, selling him at 37? What are you trying we to get for him? We answered that question, right? I'm selling the start at 37. Area, can't, can't, can't grab him at 37 in, in a startup scenario. But it, So, like, if you already have Sony, right. that, that'd be the question. Like, are you trying to move Sony and coming off a three-touchdown game? I would. Well, just coming off of a 37 startup ADP, regardless if it's – last year this year whenever it is this is what his adp is currently so that's kind of telling you what the value is regardless of if he had a three touchdown game or not so well, that was value. before that, that yeah. this, this adp came out before this big and that's what that's yes i agree i would be trying to turn sony michelle into something more stable than a patriots running back this is not a knock against sony michelle right this so, is just trying to get out from under that situation so what would be your ideal target for moving on from sony michelle if you're a sony michelle owner well pardon me if you eye roll me but i will go back to my sony michelle plus what makes me get zeke like give me the guy that's going to get the ball in his gut 25 20 25 times and and the cowboys figured out it's really really nice to throw him the ball like you can't buy saquon barkley there's no getting saquon barkley todd Gurley's basically un unaffordable like you got to give up a ton to get Todd Gurley. I don't know. C. G. Anderson can do the same job, right? So you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see what Sony, Sony, and what gets me Zeke. Sony, Sony, and what gets me a, Ty, a Tyreek Hill. Like, give me somebody that I can plug in my lineup every week and just feel good about it. Right. I think I'll, agreed. I think that's what you're looking to move him. What I'd be looking to move him for. I think that's kind of what we all came down to. Like Aaron Jones is right behind him in the ADP. Would you move Sony Michelle for Aaron Jones? If I was in a startup, I would probably take Aaron Jones over Sony Michelle. I feel a little bit better about that. I I'm feel in the like same spot. I'm both same answer for both of those guys. Aaron Jones and what takes me to get higher than that? Darius guys. I haven't even said, seen Darius guys play an NFL game yet. Doesn't matter. Darius guys is ADP thirty four higher than Ooh, Sony Michelle. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, doesn't even matter. I'd probably keep Sony in that instance. I'd probably take Sony over Darius. I want Darius guys. I did see the the workouts, the latest workout video from Darius Geis. He posted himself on Twitter the other day, just doing some some uh, uh some what do you call that? The, the sideways stuff. It was it was good looking. He said only like three months out of surgery or something. AJ like Green, that. four months. Sony Michelle. No, I'm not going to a thirty something year old receiver. So no T Y Hilton. Rather hmm. not. Um. Uh, just rolling down the. Uh, how about Philip Lindsay? These were higher than him on the list. These are these are lower. Yeah. Th well, they should be. I don't. I don't. Philip Lindsay for Sony. Yeah. No way. Oh no way. Why in the world would I go backwards? I'm trying well, to go this up. Is, this is that was a guy who had much more workhorsey like numbers. Like I take well, Corey Davis over Sony Michelle. He was healthy. Philip Lindsay was healthy. Sure. If I, if I could take Sony Michelle and turn him into still Corey doesn't Davis. explain what happened from week 13 to week 15 of. Sony and there's other games in there. What was week two and three? You know, there's there's Sony Michelle. Yeah, there's times two, when week two and three he was coming back from a knee scope. You said that yourself. I, I did, but I'm saying like there there's plenty of times where he was in there and and healthy enough to not, you know, garner what he what you think he should and how good he is and it's situational and and what's going on with the Patriots. But Philip Lindsay didn't have any of that. Like he actually beat out a guy who they drafted. Sure he did. So no go on Philip Lindsay. No, I think I'm dropping just in name equity alone. I'm dropping down, going from Sony to Philip Lindsay. I'm sticking with Sony and trying to work my way up. I'm not going to go backwards to Philip Lindsay. Sony's oh. got a ton of name Saying equity. it might not be going backwards. It's not. Um, it you, is, though. It just, you, said Corey, <laughs> you said Corey Davis? Yeah. I'll take Corey Davis. 
because you're you're not losing any name cachet. You're not losing any name value because Corey Davis still's got a great name. Yeah, I I got to stick with the running back. I'll take Sony over Corey Davis just because he is a running back. I say Corey Davis because at this point I probably already have a couple running backs on my team if we're doing a startup, and I'm probably looking to mend my lack of wide receivers. And Corey Davis is like the last of the true number ones that I feel pretty decent about. Kenny Galladay's gone, and you think somebody will give you Dalvin Cook for Sony Michelle? I mean, Dalvin Cook's couple uh he's, he's up there he's, he's around up there up the but this list. is before the 100 yards three touchdowns in the first half i think you might could get dalvin cook i don't know why you'd make a lot like you probably have to it has to be something else in there okay i would think what maybe i'm sending sony michelle for dalvin cook today i already tried that even when, even when dalvin cook wasn't playing and in, in the season after sony michelle was going for 20 had 24 carries and two touchdowns and 125 yards i tried to trade sony michelle for dalvin cook it did not work well I do remember that. Now that you mention it, you were telling you were upset about it. I'm trying it again. It just because it didn't work for Casey doesn't mean it can't work for you. At sure, all. but I tried it in real life on a higher dollar valued league, and no dice. 125 dollars. 150. 150. I tried. It. That's what I'm doing. And if they say no, I'll send it back. All right. So Kenny Galladay. I'll take Kenny. I'm like same same reason I took Corey Davis. Same with Sony. Staying with Sony. All right. Well, it sounds like you're in on Sony then. You said you were out on Sony. It sounds like you're kind of in. Well, I didn't say I didn't say I was so I didn't say Fournette. I was drafting AJ Green or Kenny Galladay at the end of the third round either. So you're trying to get Leonard Fournette? I'm staying with Sony. I'd probably take Leonard. All right. Last one. Leonard. Uh well, that's think this is too easy, but uh carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Yeah, Come I on. think that's too easy for our <laughs> not, group. All right, not let's... in this room, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mahomes, Mahomes or, or Ertz? Yeah, I'll mm. take Mahomes. Both of them. I would take both of them, too. I'll move, I'll move up and get both. I've never said that about a quarterback before. Me neither. But... Feels, it feels liberating. <laughs> I feel like I just took my shirt off outside in the cold. <laughs> My, nip, a, my nipples just got hard. Did a polar bear plunge. All right, so there, Mahomes. there was a real, a real question. Um, about a trade that we had from a Patreon member um, from uh, Darth Tater. <laughs> you can follow him on uh, the Twitter. Twitters. I think it's just at Darth Tater. Oh, he's, he's there's good, some, he's some good numbers follow. in there. Good follow. Sean Bosley. Sean Bosley. He hit us up on Patreon, was was trying to get Sony Michelle. He was like, should I offer? I'm, I'm about to make the trade from get, give up Mike Williams in 1-7 to get back Sony in 2-3. We all like conversed about it. We thought that was a pretty decent idea, right? Sony grab him. Uh, he just had that three touchdown game, so it's, he's pretty hot. The guy that's selling him was trying to capitalize on him. We we helped him acquire him, uh, and then he hit us back again. He's like, "All right, well now I'm trying to turn him quickly again and 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 get something back for Sony." So he was like, "I want to give up Sony, Chris Godwin, and one three, and get back James Conner, T. Y. Hilton." And Robert Foster, and we were like, hold the hold the phone a little bit. Like I would, like he was like, I'm about to make this trade. Let me let me know what you think. And I was like, ah, sit on it. At least sit on it for the night. I think you're giving up too much, which we ultimately came to the conclusion of. All right. So one more time, what was the trade? So the the one where he's giving away Sony. Uh-huh. So Sony, uh, one three, and Chris Godwin, right? Right. To, and to getting. Get, James Conner, T.Y. Hilton, and Robert Foster. And everyone was pretty much in agreement that that was too much. Right. Especially with that 1-3 thrown in there. And he said that Robert Foster might not even be a guy he was going to keep around based on cuts. Right. So, so I mean, basically told him not to do it. I like T.Y. T.Y. is fine. A little older. Probably could be a wide receiver one next year. It's, it's it's fine, but I mean I'll I'll keep Sony Sony around and and Godwin emerging star and then the one three Connor I see a split kind of coming with him and Jalen Samuels and then um what was the uh, the one Robert three Foster. and one and and Robert Foster's just uh, eh I think I'll I'll keep I'll keep my Sony my Godwin and my one three for for those guys yeah I think that's. I think Sony, Chris Godwin, the one three. I think that package of three players 
should get you something that sounds a little more fun than James Conner, T.Y. Hilton, and Robert Foster. It's right. basically what I We have thinking. no idea what Foster's going to do. Yeah, and, his, and to his credit, he was like, I might not even be able to keep Bryce, Robert Foster uh, for my cutdowns. Basically, he's trying to see trading Sony Godwin into 1-3 for Connor and T.Y. Right. And it seems like you're getting Connor this big deal, but I'm I'm forecasting a little bit of a split, which we'll talk about on Patreon. Right. Well, Godwin is a big name in Dynasty. The 1-3 is a very valuable asset. Right. And Sony is a beast, and James Connor's a beast, and T.Y. Hilton's a beast. Like those, I can see where he's thinking that's a good-looking trade, but I was like, I just think he could get closer to getting his trade done and pull the one three out of it mm-hmm. you know i don't think he needs to give away that much you go down to a two something something like that i just think that three person package is too valuable yeah i agree so we nix that trade on the patreon side of things i don't know if he actually pulled the trigger or not could have he certainly could have but you gotta do what's in your plums just wanted to hit you with a little bit of real life uh trade talks of what was going on on patreon and some sony michelle uh value and and when to, when we said it was okay to get the Sony Michelle and when we said it was okay not to give away the Sony Michelle. Right. Even though uh, this this that. segment we've been basically telling you to maybe try and trade Sony, but you gotta get something pretty great in return. Sure. Right. Like the first one when he gave away Mike Williams in the one seven, like that's a pretty decent sized package. But you got back to two three, so moving from one seven to two three, like you could it's have a very, half a round. It is a half a round, but you could have very easily blew the one seven pick this year and two three could have been decent. You this you might you gotta pick good players no matter where you're out in your draft and to go to get Sony Michelle, I don't I felt like that was a good move. Yeah, I I was a big Mike Williams proponent over here. I was I was fine with that trade to get Sony. And I uh, stand by that, but I and I'm I'm still down with him trying to move Sony, right? But you got to get something greater in return. Yeah, and on the Mike Williams side of things, that's a that's a thirty round difference in DLF ADP for January 30 spot difference. Yeah, thir- oh. sorry, thirty spot difference of Mike Williams, right? And, right, and the the one seven to go to the two three and get Sony. I think that's well worth it. Yeah, and so we're talking about some things that have happened on Patreon in the back and forth. I mean, when we were answering this question with Sean, I said I could have my foot in my mouth next year when James Conner and T.Y. Hilton are averaging 20 points apiece. Like, that's very possible. But the whole point was a Sony Michelle and a Chris Godwin, both of those, they're like folk two, heroes. Yeah, Dynasty. two hot. Hot, 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 hot names. Hot, yeah. So you put those two hot, hot names with one three, and you because there is – some uh, there's some really good conversation coming up about James Conner and the situation in Pittsburgh over on the, on the neck on the Patreon show tonight. And then T.Y. Hilton is he's a little older, so that you're you're gambling taking on Conner and T.Y. Hilton. I don't think I don't think you need to be getting back a gamble when you move Sony and Godwin mm-hmm. and a one three. Right, it's the whole point of moving Sony is to get back something that's not a gamble. Exactly. Shouldn't be a whole lot of value drop in Sony at least moving into this year, and shouldn't be any value drop. And Godwin moving forward, where there could be value dropping a little bit in Ty for getting older, and value dropping Connor for potentially what could be going on in the backfield in Pittsburgh. Well, perfectly said by both of you guys. All right, well, let's take another quick break. We'll be back on the other side with some Damian Williams for your pleasure. A little D dub. <laughs> Matt Damian Williams. Matt <laughs> Damian. Anyhow. <laughs> welcome back you can find us on twitter at the ff dynasty we also have a website you can find that at www.theffdynasty.com <laughs> if you're watching on youtube please be sure to hit the subscribe button click the little bell icon so you get a notification after you subscribe and, and click that little thumbs up button just Help, to, uh, helps us out help people helping people much appreciated so we're going to get into some damian williams here um what you should do with them kind of moving forward Matt <laughs> Damian Williams. So he's got an ADP currently in January of DLF of 76. Um, I look at it. This is kind of like you could either kind of take the risk um, or take no risk and maybe not necessarily be rewarded outside of what you can get for him right now. But I think if you're on the other end of this thing and you're buying Damian Williams, you may have to overpay a little bit right now. But it's not going to be anything like if the Chiefs go through the draft and don't draft a running back at least, you know, in the top four rounds or so. Like, yeah, sure, they could draft somebody in the fifth, sixth, seventh round or undrafted Philip Lindsay kind of deal, and maybe he's great. 
maybe it just ends up being a split time. But if they make it through the draft and don't draft anybody, what you paid for him right now is going to be a f- drop in the bucket to what he's going to be costing you. And do I like Damian Williams as a player? Yeah, sure. He's looked fine on the field with the Chiefs. I like what I want is the Chiefs starting running back is exactly. what I'm looking for. And he's clearly shown that he's competent enough and good enough to excel in that role. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. And I'm usually I think me and Big Co would be the guys who were like, eh, I'm not I don't want to take necessarily the risk and I'll sell this asset off and get my, you know, maybe you can get a first round pick or something like that for him and I'll take that because I got him for nothing. It's a value spike and I'm selling this guy off. Yes, um, five weeks ago he was on your waiver wire. Sure, and now he's a first round pick. You right, easily trade this guy and get a first round pick. Sure, but the the only thing that you're missing there is that we're trying to get the Chiefs running back, and that's a highly coveted asset on everything that's going on in fantasy football. You want the Chiefs starting running back, and I'm I'm willing to take the risk on that rather than what we would normally do and say, hey take your profit because you picked this guy up off the waiver wire. He was buried on the bottom of your bench for years, maybe from when he was a dolphin. You just kind of kept him around because you have a deep bench. It would have had a huge, been a huge bench for him to still be uh, on the way on, on somebody's roster. So I'm, I'm in, you know, if, if you wanted my one ten, one nine, you know, one eight or something like that, I would take that risk. Cause I, number one, I don't know what I'm getting at one, eight nine ten it's nice the first round ring to it but you don't know what you're getting number one um and number two like even if they do draft somebody there's not a huge chance that they're just gonna take over the backfield and be the guy you'll at least be able to use damian williams and it won't be a total loss in my opinion you know kareem hunt doesn't happen uh year in year out and spencer ware was injured kind of moving into that kareem hunt territory which kind of gave him yeah, we never did see Kareem uh, Spencer Ware get a shot at Damian Williams' role. Right, he was hurt, so Damian Williams came in and took. Uh, you said, I mean, you said look fine. He's looked fantastic. Um, he looked th- really good. In it this comes last back game. to comes back to really any warm body. The Chiefs running back. That's who we want. And there was a there's there's been actually there's been a ton of volume in our in our community page on Patreon about Damian Williams lately. And I just and I basically spelled out exactly what Casey said in one of my responses to um, the question was just that. And then I'll take it further here was, you know, because he said, hey, I just won a championship. And what do I do? I have Damian Williams and I got offered a first rounder for him. What do I need to do? And I said, basically, just need to know if you did you win the championship because Damian Williams came to life and scored 50 points in two weeks or are you a good team? Because in Dynasty, it really helps to know if you're a playoff team and a ch- if you won the championship, are you really a championship team or did you just get lucky for two weeks? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you made the playoffs and obviously you made he, he had won the championship. So I was like, maybe you're not a player away. Maybe you got a, pl- a great team and you can then you go and your fork in the road is OK. Do you no matter what your team state is right now, you take Damian Williams plus what gets me Zeke is how I play this Go game. With that again. No matter what, that's what you want. Maybe, you know, Damian Williams plus what gets me one of those top, top first round draft pick guys. But first otherwise, round startup draft first pick. round st- dra- startup draft pick guys. But otherwise, I play it just the same way Casey's saying here. I always would like to take this first round pick for somebody that was a waiver wire player five weeks ago. But just like he said, anybody that's on the Chiefs running back, but anybody that's playing running back for the Chiefs is worth way more than any first round pick you could get. Furthermore, if they do take somebody or bring in a, a player off a of free agency because they got the, you know, they got holes everywhere. So I don't see them paying any really good running back. But these days, you can get a good running back off free agency and pay them minimal. Even if they bring somebody in, it, at the worst, you're playing the waiting game with Damian Williams for somebody to get hurt, and he's already played. There's no way he's not at least the RB two. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like the, even even if they do that, and let's say they didn't draft somebody and they bring somebody in, like there's, I don't think there's. They paid him for two years. They got him there for cheap. They like what they saw from him. So I don't. I don't think there's a, a huge uh, chance of just some guy coming in and being the complete 
number one guy. Like if they feel like they need to bring somebody else, it's gonna probably gonna be a a split of some sort. I think some. I think I, I agree. I completely agree. I think them bringing somebody in that's a name value worthy of being over him on the depth chart right away is an underdog here. I don't think that's likely to happen either. But they could draft somebody in the third round that we thought sure. would get drafted in the second round and create this controversy on Damian Williams. But then you're just holding him and waiting him out because a He's been so good, he could either outplay him in the preseason and take over the first back role, or B, we saw, I mean, it, it you, you, you know how quickly running backs can get hurt, and Damian Williams came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, he's a starter, and he played well enough to get the contract. Yeah, he wasn't even beating that. Spencer Ware, when, when that first start, Spencer Ware was the guy for the first exactly. go-round, and he had to get so hurt. So there's no guarantee on Damian Williams, but it's likely that he gets at least – enough of a share of the running back role to be there. And it may take four weeks for somebody to get hurt for him to get back into position he's in now. But when he's there, it's gold. I mean, do you, do you even think, I mean, do you think we're going to take a chance on that kind of guy? You think they're, do you think they're going to take a chance on somebody else? Have they seen enough from Damian Williams? What's what's your <clears throat> well, that, initial? I think, I'm sorry to cut. Let me finish, say this and I'll get out of Jay Wayne's work. <laughs> cut way. me off before I even start. He was <laughs> clearing, <laughs> clearing that throat up. He was, Jay Wayne was ready. <laughs> It's the same thing that Browns got Carlos Hyde for cheap off of free agency before they went into the draft. Like It's the same thing Latavius Murray was signed to the Vikings two years ago before they drafted Dalvin Cook because they mm-hmm. got him cheap. Like The Damian Williams is on the Chiefs. He was a cast off, and now the Chiefs want to give him a couple more bucks to stick around for a couple years, and he gets to play with Patrick Mahomes cheap and, insurance and, and, and win games. Guy. Hell yeah. It's good for the Chiefs and good for Damian Williams, but I don't think it's job security. for It's job security. It's not number one back security. It's not like they gave him $13 million guaranteed but, for but, the next year. But you're okay saying that I'm willing to take the risk on him, though. Absolutely. I'll take Yes, me too. I, if, well, I'm asking you. I already said I was. I would t- yes. Just I'll, after what you just, I'll give I'll give you a first round pick for Damian Williams too because it's the Chiefs running back and he's definitely going to be on the team and that's worth more than somebody I don't know about at the end of the first round. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement and and it, my initial reaction was that I would probably be down to move Damian Williams if I could turn him into a first round pick just based on picking him up off the waiver wire in week freaking thirteen or yes. whatever it was yes. and flipping that for a first round pick. Now, all that being said, I. I reviewing some of the stuff thinking about it over the last few days because i knew we were going to talk about them I, th- I think i'm on the same page with you guys i think i'd be willing to take that chance um it's not like they they did give him five million for two years so it's like a decent amount of money for the little bit of games that he did show that he could that he could carry the load i think Cheap. he's basically auditioning for them right now to to be the main guy next year and he's knocking it out of the park i mean yep. you watch him recently and he looks good the vision looks to be there he's he's running with some power he's catching the ball really well the hands look pretty dang good if not borderline really good and so and it's the easiest job since the steelers running back situation and so i think it's yeah. worth taking the risk i That's mean a good point Spencer Ware is not on contract for next year. Um, I do think that they probably will bring in somebody else. Um, it looks no, like the they have to just to fill up a room, right? Yeah. Um, they do have they have their first round pick. They have two second round picks, a third round pick, and then a conditional fourth round pick, which they may or may not have. I I don't think that they would spend the top. You know, they got th- they got four picks in the top three rounds. I I don't think they would take a running back in that spot. And and if if he dodges all three of those days, then you're feeling really good about him. But not knowing a ton about this year's class, like we're, we're, we're deep into looking at the running backs, and I'm probably maybe eight deep right now that I could that I feel comfortable about at least knowing stuff about and, and developing my opinions on them. I don't know what I'm getting at the end of that first round. I've seen what Damian Williams can do on the field. I, I'm down to give that late first yeah. to get Damian Williams. It's if the Chiefs are comfortable with that and if they want to roll the dice on the you know the right. third, the he's third rounder. I think he's or auditioning right else. now to be the dude next year. Yeah, I mean, once Spencer like Damian Williams made me money in DFS last week. As soon as there was no Spencer Ware in the game plan and he was you know not active, I went and changed my entire roster around and was able to put. Better guys in my roster because Damian Williams was one of the cheaper backs last week, and I just I've like there's no way I'm not playing him right. if he's out there because right. he's just it's e- it's an easy like you said it's an easy job. There's there's dump downs to be had there. There's running lanes to be had there. Kareem Hunt he's not Kareem Hunt, but I mean he's playing 
really well. Yeah. So, the last thing for me there is if your team, if you did pick up Damian Williams a month ago and your team is just really bad, but you got Damian Williams, I'd be interested in seeing what I could get for him. Like, I, I know you can get a first next year, no problem. Like, well, first and what? That way, at least you know you're playing it smart enough to cash out and take any gamble out of it. But I think well, the way Casey paints it up going into the offseason, it's a minimal gamble based on uh, there's no chance he's not at least the second right. guy up. And if he does, it, it would, if I can't see them, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if they made a move in the second or third round, but we, it, because Andy Reid's wild like that. He's like, yeah. he just may, add strength on strength. My offense is great. Give me another good running back. Let's go. But Damian Williams has looked so uh, good. Andy Reid knows he wants a, a running back to do what he needs to do exactly. on his team. I mean, I'm not saying that I wouldn't sell Damian Williams for a running back that I know is really good and has has a really good opportunity and situation in front of him as well. I would definitely do that as well. I'm just saying, like, to go buy Damian Williams, I don't. I think it's lower risk right now, and it's not going to cost you a ton. You might you might strike out a little bit, but well, here's here's the thing that you said was gold. If you give a first round pick for Damian Williams right now, and they go through the off season, and Damian Williams a top running back on that depth chart, yeah, dude. You're talking about second round startup pick. Nobody's going to pay it this year. But what if he holds on to the job? I guarantee you, if Damian Williams makes it through the year as a top running back for the Chiefs next year, the following year he's in the top twenty four of a startup. Mm -hmm. There's no chance he's not. He is about to be twenty seven. Doesn't matter. But you're right. I mean, and it's only a two year deal. But if he's if if he wins Andy Reid's heart, he's a second round pick this time next year. Yeah, or you know, even if he just gets up into that third, even fourth round, I right. Mean, if he's out there as Chiefs running back, he's yeah. gonna crush. Okay. Yeah, so I would, I, yeah, would I be? Am I buy? Am I going out and buy? Like you said, am I going out and spending this first round pick on him if I, if my team's not great and I don't think that I have a chance? You know, next year to, this was my missing piece here. No, but right, I, th I think this is a good guy. Exactly. Part of what I just said had a big if in it. Right. Yeah. If if that happens, it's going to be a huge payoff for your first round pick. So if you're if you're if you're on the bottom of the barrel there, I don't think I'd make this move. But if you're a top team, I would definitely go for it. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to end today's show with somewhat of it's not crazy breaking news, but there's a little bit of news about something that happened in the NFL. The Steelers hired NC State's um, running back coach or assistant uh, Eddie Faulkner as their running back coach, um, which connecting the dots a little bit there we've been talking about some Jalen Samuels and, and Connor and we talked a little bit about maybe what that backfield looks like for a second we're going to do more of that on Patreon um, but this is potentially a, a big deal because this is a guy who coached Samuels all through uh, college here he had 202 receptions throughout his college career I believe um, I don't have the stat in front of me but obviously old 38 for the Steelers got some run at the end of last year, Jalen Samuels and Connor was great and was really solid all through the year. But if, if that never happens and you never get to see Jalen Samuels, this is a non-issue moving forward. But now there's some dots being kind of connected. This Eddie Faulkner's coming over. This is a guy who used uh, Samuels to, uh, you know, the best of his ability. Right. This so is, this is strong. Right. Now, now you could be having this, you know, a little bit of a, Maybe it's not 50-50, but even if it's 60-40 or 65-45 or something, you know, something along those lines moving forward with Jalen Samuels and, and um, Connor, Connor, you, you got a, a little bit of an issue for a guy who James Connor is at, you know, ADP 18 right now. Right. 18. And that's not a move that we've seen out of the Steelers. Not, you know, it's been one running back. Basically, whoever right. they whoever they're trotting out there is out there almost every play for like five years now. So that's how we're, we're going to continue to this dive into Patreon here. Go to our website at, at the FF Dynasty, the FF Dynasty dot com. Middle of the page, over to the right, there's the button that you clicks you on Patreon. You can also go to Patreon dot com slash the FF Dynasty. Um, Five dollar holla. There's actually a, our last week's Patreon show is up there for free. You can just press play. It's not hidden or anything. All the other posts, if it's a Patreon member only post, it's uh it's locked to the public. And once you sign up, you'll have access to all those backlogs, all the community page, which just a tons of tons of trade questions and theory questions. And we're, we're up in there chatting a bunch. So definitely get over there. Check it out. After six months, you get a free T-shirt. 
Uh, it's just a good time, extra extra show every week, and uh, yeah, we say it's five dollars, and there's no commitment. Like you sign up for one month, five bucks, and if you don't like it, you can roll out. But you know, just taking the time to sign up and and getting on the platform will take you a few minutes, and then when you get done with that, it's all a good time from there. Absolutely. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. If you're listening on iTunes, please give us that five star review. That would be very kind. If you're listening to this on YouTube, go hit subscribe, hit the notification button so you get notified anytime we post something, and thumbs up the video for us. That'd be mighty kind of you. Uh, Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game.